It was late spring of 1968, and the abbot of Gethsemane was shaken to the core of his faith. The visit from the FBI agent had given him the final shove he needed to make the dreaded decision, and with that in mind, he sent for the monk to be brought in. The strong man, the now famous writer, came in wearing his work clothes, and for all the world he looked like a sunburned laborer from the fields. The abbot bade him to sit, and then he explained that he very much approved of the brothers' travel plans to Alaska, California, and the Orient. He told the brother about the visit from the FBI agent with the unusual name, though he didn't mention Boston Corbett's name, nor the subject of their discussion. It weighed heavy on the abbot's heart that one of his own flock was being investigated as a radical anti-American subversive. Still, he didn't break the FBI agent's confidence. The abbot told the tired man, who had just come in from the fields, that even though his writing had brought a great deal of attention to the abbey, this kind of attention from law enforcement was troublesome. And even though he had all faith that the brother was being guided by compassion and the love of God, the abbot wanted the brother to consider a longer absence from the abbey, that perhaps with time and prayer in the wilderness he could come back to the brotherhood of the Cistercians. He would always be a brother of the order, but he should consider moving to the new state of Alaska until his heart was settled. The brother kept his head bowed as he listened. He and the abbot were no strangers to argument. The abbot did not often understand the brother's need to expose so many of his worldly opinions in his writing, but the brother was strong and clearly very experienced. Having come to Christ late in life and grown up with an artistic father in France and England, the brother had a more sensualist worldview than most who were called to the order. If anything, he understood issues of man and culture better than most. His pride was what worried the abbot. There was something in the abbot's tone that made it clear that the brother was receiving a well-considered recommendation, and this was not an invitation to argue. 